trauma and the nervous system. Traumatic events, events which make you think you're in serious danger, trigger emotional and physical reactions that increase the risk of developing different health conditions, such as depression, chronic stress, PTSD, addiction, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and even cancer. These traumatic events can be psychological or physical, and how a person reacts is down to their own life story, conditioning, triggers, and crucially, the regulation of their nervous system. Our prehistoric ancestors, and all mammals, have evolved with an inbuilt threat detection system, which is crucial to survival. Our autonomic nervous system responds to danger with a series of physiological changes adapted to help us face the threat. Our autonomic nervous system also manages body functions, including heart rate, cognitive function, and body temperature. Our nervous system really does impact our entire well-being, both emotionally, relationally, mentally, and physically. Understanding and tapping into our innate healing capacity and regulation of the nervous system is key for our health, well-being, improving function, and maintaining healthy relationships. Dr. Stephen Porges, author of The Polyvagal Theory, uses an analogy of a traffic light to help explain how our nervous system response affects us physiologically and psychologically. Green is the safety zone, our social engagement system. Our heart rate slows, digestion activates, muscles are responsive, we're able to make contact with others, sight and hearing is clear. Yellow is the danger zone, our heart rate increases, respiration increases, pain increases, muscles are mobilized for movement. Red is the life threat zone. Our system goes into immobilization. This zone leads to a severe reduction in metabolic resources that are observed as a behavioral shutdown. A healthy autonomic nervous system is fluid, bouncing between the green and yellow zones. We see this in action whilst in positive relationships, where we are both safe and immobilized or in play, where we're both safe and mobilized. A healthy system will allow us to become more resilient and respond to the situations around us with ease. However, trauma and chronic stress keeps our nervous system in a state of dysfunction and stops it from functioning in a healthy and resilient way. This keeps us stuck in our survival response. Therefore, if our nervous system is dysregulated, we will spend too much time in the yellow and red zones, increasing our risks of depression, anxiety, brain fog, chronic pain, digestive issues, headaches, autoimmune disorders, and medical complications. Our nervous system is always alert, continually scanning our environment for signs of danger. We can see this in action through our fight, flight, freeze and shutdown responses. In our daily lives, this response is activated either when in the face of imminent danger, such as at the top of a skyscraper, passing a growling dog, or as a result of psychological threat, such as a presentation at work. Here's a little bit of science. In response to acute stress, the central nucleus of the amygdala, the part of your brain involved in fear learning, and the activation of fear, sends signals to the hypothalamus, which in turn stimulates the autonomic nervous system. This system has two parts, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. The parasympathetic instigates the immobilized shutdown and freeze responses, and the sympathetic nervous system stimulates the mobilized fight and flight responses. The sympathetic nervous system triggers the release of catecholamines, including adrenaline and noradrenaline, through the stimulation of the adrenal glands. If you encounter threat that you feel confident you can face, you respond with fight. If you encounter threat that you cannot defeat, you are likely to flight. However, sometimes the body will immobilize. 
either by shutting down and fainting or by freezing. Shutting down is similar to a mouse appearing to be dead in the clutches of a cat. Freezing recruits both sympathetic and parasympathetic influences. This hybrid immobilization state, similar to a deer freezing on the highway in response to a car's headlights, recruits sufficient sympathetic input to maintain muscle tone and prevent fainting. These defense options are the body's unconscious decision to protect itself through a range of defensive strategies. Freeze is a common response to those who are in chronic threat situations and who feel unable to protect themselves, such as a child who is abused in the home. When someone freezes, their body is trying to protect them and has decided it is the best tactic to survive the threat. During fight, flight, freeze and shutdown responses, numerous physiological changes occur. Muscles, your muscles will tense, primed to run or flee. In freeze response, you may go rigidly immobile, while your muscles in a shutdown response will reflexively become limp. Your heart rate increases in order to bring more oxygen to your major muscles and organs. Lungs, breathing in fight or flight will speed up to deliver more oxygen to the blood. However, in both the freeze and shutdown responses, breathing may slow down or become restricted. Eyes and ears. Hearing will often become sharper and attention to your peripheral vision increases to detect threat better. Skin. Your skin, the largest organ of the body, reacts accordingly, either becoming cold, pale or clammy, or increasing in temperature and becoming sweaty. Digestion. Your guts may become tense and knotted, or may loosen and relax, both of which can cause digestive discomfort. Pain. Fight or flight can temporarily reduce your perception of pain. In one situation, a person may shift between fight, flight, or freeze instinctively with the nervous system responding automatically. These physiological responses are acute and involuntary. However, although often unpleasant, they are crucial for our survival. Once a threat has passed, a well-regulated nervous system will move back into the green zone. The green zone is the state of homeostasis and safety producing calm by steadying respiratory function, lowering heart rate, and releasing the stored energy from the muscles and the body. This process should happen 20 to 30 minutes after the danger has passed. However, if it is not effectively activated, the traumatic energy becomes stored in the body. A well-regulated nervous system will return to its natural state 20 to 30 minutes after the danger has passed. And we see this with animals in the wild who understand how to respond to threat with their bodies effectively. They will quite literally shake the energy from their bodies. However, with some individuals who've experienced trauma and most specifically a history of shutting down or freezing, the traumatic energy can become stored and stuck. This stored traumatic energy can cause significant mental and physical distress as it leads to an exaggerated stress response within the individual. As a result, reactions to threat are likely to become exaggerated, with the red zone becoming overstimulated. In turn, the red zone can further decrease functionality, resulting in an individual becoming unable to respond to triggers appropriately and remaining in a perpetual mode of fight or flight, unable to return to their natural harmonious state. For those with an exaggerated stress response and who have stored traumatic energy, their reactions to these situations are likely to be inappropriate or exaggerated and will be accompanied by acute emotional and physiological distress. For example, a difficult work meeting or disagreement with a friend could inappropriately activate the red zone. Oftentimes, this is due to past traumatic experiences being triggered. These could be adverse childhood experiences known as ACEs, natural disasters, accidents, or assaults. These are known as shock traumas. Developmental or relational trauma, such as abuse, neglect, or chronic adversity can also result in our nervous system acting from a perpetual state of insecurity. 
Environmental factors, job loss, chronic stress, debt or illness can also cause our nervous system to act from the red zone. Research has also shown that trauma can be passed down intergenetically through at least three generations. Therefore, how we interpret and respond to the world is key to our nervous system regulation and our quality of life. We now understand that trauma is our reaction to a threat rather than the threat itself. Adverse childhood experiences or ACEs refer to potentially traumatic events experienced in childhood. Research shows that ACEs have a long-term impact on a person's health and well-being. Social interactions are one of the earliest developmental stages of a child. A baby will develop an attachment bond with their primary caregiver, which has a huge impact on a child's physical, emotional, psychological and cognitive development, as are all future relationships in the child's life. The attachment type that is created acts to regulate the baby's nervous system. Threat response will be learned through the relationship with their caregiver and the quality of this relationship affects the child's ability to self-regulate their nervous system in response to threat. A 20-year longitudinal study demonstrated that kindergarten children who displayed a propensity to positive socialising and sharing were more likely to become healthier, well-balanced, driven adults. The children who lacked social skills or tended towards isolation were found to be more likely to develop negative behaviours such as substance abuse. Childhood trauma can hinder our ability to trust and relate to others openly and stop us from connecting with others. In adulthood, the threat we experienced in childhood can still be reacted to as if it is happening in the present. Triggers such as people, places, smells and traumatic memories can hit us at any time and send us back into a trauma response. Our nervous system will keep trying to protect us, even if we are safe. ACEs can lead to the adoption of health risk behaviours, such as substance misuse, self-harm, disordered eating and violence. They also increase one's risk of disease, disability, social problems and can lead to early death. All of the following are considered adverse childhood experiences. Physical, emotional or sexual abuse, bullying by another child or sibling, homelessness, exposure to domestic violence, exposure to mental illness in the home, exposure to substance misuse in the home, neglect, parental divorce, incarceration of a family member, discrimination, exposure to violence in the community. So how can we combat our earlier traumatic experiences and develop a regulated nervous system which operates in the green safe zone? Dr. Stephen Porges, the author of the polyvagal theory, proposes that when we feel safe within our experience, we are operating from within our social engagement system. Our social engagement system allows us to feel connected to others, ourselves and the world around us. We can co-regulate our nervous system when we're connected to others in a positive way. Connecting with people who have a regulated nervous system and who are calm, confident and happy will retrain our nervous system and allow us to find our ventral vagal state. Our ventral vagal state stimulates physical and psychological responses such as reduced heart rate, steadier breathing, relaxed digestion and a reduction in stress hormones. This gives us a sense of safety, empathy, compassion, joy, mindfulness and connection. Our social relationships play a huge role in our mental health, physical health and mortality risk. As human beings, we have evolved to thrive in groups. The group offers safety and protection from threats, whether it be the predators that our ancient ancestors faced or the varying adversities of our modern day lives. We learn, grow, work and contribute to our communities and in turn the communities and wider society that we are a part of shape our personalities and identities. The vagus nerve is central to Porges polyvagal theory. It is the longest cranial nerve within the body 
and connects to many different areas carrying messages quickly from the brain to the lungs, heart and intestines, as well as regulating facial muscles and skin sensations. It is also core to our fight, flight, freeze response. To find the ventral vagal state, it is essential to explore these key areas of personal growth. Triggers. Explore and understand our triggers. Immerse ourselves in positive conditions. Become aware of our perception of threat and how it is played out in the body and develop positive coping mechanisms. Social conditions. Seek out and foster relationships where we feel confident and comfortable. This will activate the social engagement system and result in us feeling safe and having lowered stress responses. Being in nature is also known to help regulate our system and create calm and harmony. Body awareness techniques. By becoming more embodied, an individual can respond proactively to the physiological changes Somatic experiencing can help people find their way into the safe ventral vagal state. Sadly, we are faced with a global issue of chronic health conditions as a result of trauma. The way we perceive and react to threat is automatic and subconscious. However, we can retrain our nervous system and enable ourselves to flow between the green and orange states naturally. We can recognise our triggers and seek out conditions which foster calm and enable personal growth. Through our understanding of our evolution as social creatures, and through our knowledge of the autonomic nervous system, it is evidence that positive connection with others enforces a calm behavioural state. We can encourage this sense of calm to radiate out in all areas of our life, whether they be at home, social groups or at work. It is possible to heal from past trauma and live a joyful, empathic, healthy life.